Hello, everybody. Welcome to the training, learning, and development community. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. We've got a nice little crowd already going. Let's see who is live. Kara's in and Kim, Lynn, Becky, Darcy. Nice to see you. Um, Cheryl, Tom, Constance, Carrie, Michaela, Brad, Dana. Thanks for joining us this morning or today. <laughs> I always forget about the time zone thing. Um, today we're here and we're talking about LMSs again. We've got another episode in our Real Talk series, and um, and I'm excited to, to talk about this one because I, I am actually kind of a fan of this product anyway. And um, and also the two guests that I have on it are um, two incredible instructional designers and um, that that work at a really interesting company, I think, and um, and Christiana, who's been a long supporter for TLDC. Um, I'd like to start out, Christiana, if you could sort of just talk about Aristocrat and sort of what you do there. Uh, it's just sort of the company, and then we'll go on to to Mike and 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 get the lowdown on exactly what Mike does. Sure. Everyone, am I coming through? Right. You're coming through. Okay, loud and good. clear. Yay. Um, so good morning. So Aristocrat is, um, our, our full name is Aristocrat Leisure Limited, and it's an Australian company. So 60 years, I think, something around there. Uh, and the short answer of what we do is we make slot machines. Um, that's just the easiest way to say it. Uh, the long answer is we are a digital entertainment company um, because Aristocrat Leisure Limited um, owns Aristocrat in the United States. So if you ever go to a casino, uh, one, our big brand that everybody loves is Buffalo. Um, and you'll once you work in the industry or you're aware that there are actual manufacturers, you'll start noticing usually on like the bottom half of a slot machine, there'll be a logo somewhere that says if it's Aristocrat or IGT or Konami or I could go on. Anyways, um, it's one of those things you never see until you know. Um, so, but in addition to owning or, you know, being aristocrat, we own a company called VGT, which is video gaming technology that's huge in Oklahoma um, and a lot of the Midwest tribal states where they still have what we refer to as class two gaming, which means that their gaming is really an electronic bingo card. So even though you're sitting at a slot machine with reels and it looks like what you see in the strip in Vegas, if you look usually in the mic in the upper left, I think yeah. there's a little tiny bingo card. And what you're really playing is live call bingo with a computer. Um, it's, it's wild. Fascinating. Um, so, so you basically work for a gaming company. Yeah, but we also own Product Madness, Big Fish Gaming, and Polarium, and they do things like Heart of Vegas. Um, oh, Peacock, what's the name of those? The because there's what's the name of the Polarium game that's like Aliens or Vikings or something. Aliens and Vikings. That's uh, something. I, Anyways, no. a lot of yeah, a lot of your app store games that aren't slot machine related at all um, are actually aristocrat games. Nice. That's awesome. Of, yeah. So we have diversified into um, non gaming gaming. <laughs> non gaming. Oh, gaming. Everywhere. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> and so over at. Um, at Aristocrat, you're like the director of learning solutions, right, Christiana? Yes, sir. Nice. How long have you been over at Aristocrat? It'll be 13 years in December. Wow, that's nice. That's a I long didn't time. need to stay this long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, Mike, wait, I'm sort of just want to clarify here. I think Christiana, Christiana just called you Peacock. Is that what you go by? <laughs> yes, she just, she, you can hear me, right? Um, yeah. yeah, she calls me peacock um yeah, sorry. i mean I, you know if she first started calling me peacock i'm like what um and now i don't i think if someone in a meeting says mike she doesn't know who she's who oh, God. No. <laughs> we have a new employee or something um no she she just calls me and I, i'm happy i'm cool i mean last name's peacock Go with works it, you know? for you. Uh, <laughs> so I, I actually the first time i kind of came across i think you was just at learn a palooza recently which was yeah 
which was cool. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. This guy works at Aristocrat with Christiana. <laughs> and then lo and behold, here she she's like, can I invite Chris, um, Mike into or can I invite Peacock into, uh, <laughs> into this broadcast? So I'm Not like, oh, cool. I just saw him at, at Learner Palooza. So what do you do at Aristocrat? Um, I'm a senior instructional designer. I've uh, been there almost two years. Uh, next month will be two years. And I help develop all the uh, instructional designing for the, uh, for the trainers or that or the, go on to our LMS, uh, do camera work, video work, filming of new products, uh, basically anything and everything uh, to get content out to our, our techs or our customers uh, to know and learn more about our product. Awesome. Very nice. All right. So well, let's get into this conversation. We're going to be talking about your LMS, the one that you work with, and which is Exonify. And Exonify based in North America, they're Canadian, right? And I just want to like, I, I guess just to be a little transparent, I used to, um, when I, I used to do business with Exonify and um, worked with a couple people there that were always fantastic. So I've always been a kind of a fan of that particular product. So I'm glad we're getting to talk about it here. Now, um, why don't we hear a little bit about, first of all, um, let's start with you, Mike. What other LMSs have you worked with in the past? Um, at Aristocrat, I believe we have uh, Evolve, um, and, which is our big LMS that we put training into for customers and such. Um, Exonify has been, been great. And just over the years, I've been in education for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so we've worked with a variety of LMSs and switched them and modified them over the years. Um, we are, you know, we're always exploring new ones and always looking to, you know, going to DevLearn and talking to people about their LMSs and seeing which one's best, you know, what, what they can do for uh, any company for that matter. Um, some are, you know, some are user friendly. Some I forget I need to learn how to write code again. Uh, yeah. So that's a, <laughs> that's a learning curve. Um, but there's, there's been a variety of I can't remember them off the top of my head of which. Yeah, which, they yeah. all kind of meld together after a while. Um, Christiana, how long, Christiana, how long have you guys has um, Aristocrat been using Exonify? I think it's about four years now. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, cool. the Evolve um, is our our branding or our internal branding for um, Oracle's learn.com Taleo learning management system or whatever they call it now. But they're, the one that like 10 years ago when we bought it or bought into it was learn.com. Cool. Can you tell me just a little bit? Okay. So now I want to sort of discuss what, what, what you do within the LMS, your, your individual roles um, when you're working with your learning management system. So Christiana, like you said that you were the business process owner, um, the admin and end user. I'm really curious about that, the the business process owner of, you know, how you, how you mentioned that, because I'm like, I've never actually heard anyone describe their role as that. So can you describe that a little bit, what that means? Oh, you're asking me to remember what I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's that, that saying? I've slept since then, so I rebooted my brain. Um, no, I think basically what it means is that we – we don't sit in IT or HR. We actually sit in a business unit, um, technology services. And we, whether it's Evolve or Exonify, we end up owning the LMS and being the business process owner for all of the other subject matter experts around the business that need to produce training. And we also, are the, so we go out and we, we are their admin. We, um, Whenever the business is looking at training delivery of some form, we're coming to us um, for advice on how to best to do it. So that's sort of the, the business process, which I feel like I made it sound fancier previously that I don't remember why. It, it does sound kind of fancy, but I like it because it, ma <laughs> it makes sense, right? Yeah. Because LMS can be is an integral part or should be an integral part of the business. And okay. if, if you're choosing an LMS without that in mind, then um, I think that just that decision is going to be a lot less effective overall, because ultimately it translates into dollars, 
right? Yeah. Saving time, saving money, all of that yeah. stuff. So, um, so I think that that's a really important role. Now, um, on the admin side, how much do you do? Do you actually are you in there doing a lot of the technical stuff, or how much of the administration is, is your responsibility? Um, for me and the team, it's all our responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, we do single sign-on, so we have to, but we don't have it um, connected through an API yet to like mm -hmm. Workday, uh, which is what we use for HR. So we are still at this point manually creating accounts um, the and archiving them. Because we use Exonify with a subset of the global operation, it hasn't been too big of a lift, but we're getting ready to bring everyone in the Americas in to Exonify, and we are switching to an API to do user provisioning. Um, IT is in the process of setting that up now. Um, but we've already connected it to our single sign-on, which is Okta for us. Um, nice. Yep. So yeah. Yep. Oh, that's but yeah, cool. We, we do the, right now we're doing the user accounts. We're obviously, you know, like when, when Peacock creates something new, he's going in and, and uploading it and assigning it out to the proper audiences. Nice. So, Mike, why don't you talk about that a little bit? That process within Exonify, is it um, like your role specifically? Like, how how much of 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 the LMS is sort of your responsibility? Uh, it's uh, it's it's a big part. Um, I, I, I mean, Exonify is just it's a it's a different animal, yeah. but once you get used to it, it's excellent. Um, so like a process would be, you know, figure out what the business needs for, uh, you know, a case or something and then figure out the learning points, what, what, what really needs to be talked about or spoken about, then develop questions for it, some training for it. So it all ties in together. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, I think, you know, once you get buy-in with it, it's a really, really great tool, uh, for reinforcement of learning and introducing new concepts. Uh, but I, I'm in all of it. I, I go in frequently and, and check and monitor and make sure people are answering the questions properly. Or if there's a, a low rate of response for the questions, I'll go back and look at the question. Maybe we worded it wrong. Uh, we also get feedback from our FSTs in the field and say, you know, great question. However, this has changed. So we'll go back in the back end and, and, uh, and modify it. So it's, you, it's, a um, living, it's a living document. It's a living document. Nice. You know. Can you compare it at all to um, what, like what you're doing with Oracle, the Oracle LMS? Is it Talio? I can't remember how to pronounce it. Talio, Talio. Yeah. <laughs> Talio. Talio. Talio? <laughs> it's, it's night and day better. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we, uh, that we, a phrase we coined way before uh, Mike joined and before we even got Exonify is with um, Learn, which is, how we shorten the name of the Oracle one. Um, there's always one more step uh, yeah. is how we learned it. And so it's basically the user interface is still very, well, it's still very, let's see, 20, 2009. Cause <laughs> and, and you know what, in 2009, when, cause I was, I was there then and on the LMS search committee when we went from no LMS, just Excel spreadsheets and, and classrooms mm -hmm. um, and no online training at all. Um, it was, learn.com was a really good, good platform. It was cloud-based and we really needed that at the time because we wanted to keep it out of our IT department's hands. Don't tell them that we said that. <laughs> but we didn't want to have something that you downloaded to a server in 2009 and kept forever because we didn't want them in there. Right. Um, so it was fantastic. It just hasn't it hasn't evolved, which is ironic because we call it evolved. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I really didn't mean a pun out of that. And I could tell I my mic was all over that. Yeah, <laughs> I went ba dum bump in my head. Ba -dum -bump. <laughs> So and 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 so going forward though, like so, Exonify is is that much different? And like, what what are some of the more, you know? So you're saying like with with the Oracle product, it's like, hey, 2009. You know, we have your LMS over here. You might want to come get it. But then Exonify is something that you're 
you know, that you're, you're, that it feels like you guys are growing with and some of the email messaging that we have, you're looking at potentially expanding stuff. Like, how is that? Can you describe why, why, why that's the case? What, what kind of results have you seen? We've actually had some really good results. One of the things that Exonify does um, for their customers, which I, you know, I think every company that does something that is akin to professional services, because really, you know, it's cloud-based, right? So it's almost heading in that more, it's SaaS, but it's heading towards professional services, is our client success manager does a annual business value analysis with us. Um, and they have a formula that they tried to explain to me um, and I don't get it because uh, it's math stuff and I'm not, it gets too far into math for me. Um, mm -hmm. Where basically we've been able to show that with the knowledge lift and the, our measurement, our initial measurement has always been um, case closure rates, right? So, so Mike referenced um, FSTs, that's our field service techs, and that's our primary user of Exotify today. Mm -hmm. And they are, um, you know, they're out there, they're getting cases of to do an install or to fix a repair or repair a slot machine. And so it's case closures, you know, is the case open for one day, two days, three days, four days. And we've been able to show that since we actually implemented Exonify and another mobile tool, Suzuki, which is a knowledge repository for technical writing, that case closure rates have increased, meaning that there are less cases staying open for three or four or longer days and more cases being closed within one day. Um, and some of that, I mean, that's not 100% Dazuki and Exonify, but that the ability to have the inform to be well knowledge through training and have all the knowledge at your fingertips on your phone, like if you can't remember how to do something, um, has shown that Exonify more than pays for itself. So that's great. They, 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 I think the formula is. You know, we have an evaluation of, of like sixty dollars a day that is lost when a, one game is down, um, and so therefore we can, you know, for every day it's the case is open where the game is down and it's not incurring revenue, um, then we've been able to do that, and it's basically about thirty percent of what that true math is of a game mm -hmm. down is attributed to the learning tools. Um, so we're able to, to show how much money we save year yeah. over year by closing cases faster. And it's more than the bill for Exonify. Nice. So that's like those improved yeah. and, and improved and superior metrics are yeah. just, um, yeah, that's, that's, and, that's a big deal. And this is something because, you know, there's always a lot of talk in L&D about showing your business value and using the metrics that the business uses to prove your worth, you know, because we're all cost centers. There's no, yeah. we're not ever not going to be a cost center um, mm -hmm. unless you're like at LinkedIn Learning or something. Um, but then it's really interesting that they actually drive this. Like they understand the value of talking, having the L&D team talk to the business in terms of the business. So they actually help you do this and they mm -hmm. prepare the, the PowerPoint for you. And now that we've been in there for a few years, I keep the PowerPoint alive that shows um, the case closure rates and the business value. But it, it's just something I've never encountered with any of our other vendors mm -hmm. that they want to help you communicate to the business there the value it's a, 
Yeah, it's a crucial point. And, and surprisingly, that's not something that we've really covered in any of the previous three episodes. I think that says a lot about, about the product, um, you know, that, that you're even mentioning that. And mm -hmm. at some point we're going to start, you know, I want to talk about some of the problems you're having with about Exonify. So it doesn't seem like we're, we're totally just trying to, uh, to, to promote a product here, but I want to talk, Mike, if you could, if you could talk a little bit about Exonify's integration with maybe authoring tools. I don't know if those guys have like, if there is one that's built into it or anything, but um, how do you guys build your training? And is it some, is, does Exonify um, so, kind of support um, how you, how you create? Oh sure, uh, we uh, design training just like most people on on the on the line here. Is uh, we use you know we may do a, a rise module, uh, a video and beyond, uh, captivate, articulate, you know all those all those wonderful tools that are out there. And it does um, in the training module part of Exonify, it does support uh, SCORM to video to external link. Uh, so it's really, really great. It does, it frees us up to actually create the way we want to create. Um, it doesn't hinder what we can or cannot use. Uh, so in that aspect, it's wonderful as a designer to go. All right, this is this would definitely be a rise module, and we know it can sustain it in there. And then the the content in Exonify itself supports the training modules, and once the user takes it, um, it's a really nice flow from question to training module. Um, to uh, and this is some game gamification built in there, so we all know the studies on that. So and we rotate the games around according to the season. You know, football comes out. We have there's a football kicking game, and uh, you know we'll put that in there. So we know it. It uh, you know playing the game, they get the question, and we know the science behind that. So it's a really it's a and, and it's, again it's in small chunks. So everything that we put in there, we understand is going to be in a small amount of information uh, given to the to the trainer or the customer, um, and we so we under we we I guess design accordingly, but it's, we haven't um, really found any limitations with what we can put in there yet. That's what I was gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna ask that because I'm like, this sounds so great, but you've had to have found some limitations. The, well, the, one of the limitations, and I don't, I you know, I don't want to be the you know the other it's side. Okay. It's okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Is, is from coming from an education point of view. Um, my job as an educator was to see if the student knows what it is. So it's always like the quiz kind of thing. Well, with this, it's you get a question and you answer it on a, according to a low, medium, or high comfort zone of knowing the answer. And it's okay if you get it wrong. Um, it's to learn by getting things wrong. And there's an explanation down below. We put in pictures and videos. So if you do get the question wrong, then you are learning by making a mistake. Mm -hmm. Unlike education, where if you get it wrong, you're graded, you know, and so forth. Uh, red pen comes out. Um, it's uh, so it, it took me a couple months actually to understand. Oh, that's what you want this to do. Uh, if I get it wrong, it's not being graded in the back end somewhere, and it's going on my permanent record on my one on ones. Um, it's actually to you know, enforce, um, you know, the information that we want and to show you why you got it wrong and to help you to go back to the training to get it right and move forward. So once, uh, once that concept's understood, it's, it works pretty well. Nice. So I'm just sort of curious, what do you guys, what do you still use the Oracle product for? Um, that is still the one that the entire global workforce is in. And and our customer base, um, because we do train our customers on our product. Mm -hmm. um, but from an employee standpoint, that's where like we just did a global launch of responsible gaming mm -hmm. um, and that went in there. So because all five thousand ish people had to take it. Yeah. So that's what we use it for. Mostly compliance stuff right now. Right, just for for that ability for the scale and all of that. Yeah. Um, nice. But we're how, looking how to swap it oh. out. Yeah. 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 Your um, how much does IT have to get involved in um, in handling uh, what Exonify does? Do you guys have to work with them a lot to to get things done? No, they're pretty much hands off um, unless there's something with a user or something. But I don't I don't 
no, I think 99% of the time it's us. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the ones calling the shots. We're the ones setting everything up in the back end. And if we have an issue, we just reach out to Exonify. Uh, mm -hmm. So our IT is pretty much hands off on it. Nice. Okay. This is sounding a little too good. Um, I know. Huh? <laughs> I got a, good question I, I from, I got a great know? question from Eric. Um, what standards do you publish in? Like SCORM, XAPI, both or neither? Both. Both. Uh, yep. We do those. We And video, um, everything simple from a video link uh, to uploading a video to uh, SCORM, uh, uh, XAPI, um, from Captivate or Articulate. Uh, what, it, it's really, really responsive uh, to most platforms which mm -hmm. i love i love kara what's the catch yeah i um, know i'm trying to i, I don't know do you know want me to share screen for a sec or yeah yeah have... totally okay. yeah go for it i'm logged in i whoa no no not that share sorry where's this oh i forgot where's the share screen button oh you Here just mouse over your window and then um, oh yeah 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 thank you, you. i forgot so uh, <laughs> Hold on for a sec as I go in. So um, this is my learner homepage, but I'll pop in, especially because we you, you can see, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Yeah, I can totally okay. see. Okay, thank you. All right. um, I will pop into the admin zone because of Eric's question, and you know we can actually show you. So um, I'm just going. I'm get, I know I'm going quick, but. I'm just popping into something really fast. Oh, sorry. Of course, I picked one that doesn't have anything in it. Here, I know this one does. Um, so in training modules, if I add a new training module, see, I can do a SCORM, a video link. I can actually upload the video file. Um, there, I can do an external link. And Peacock, isn't this what we do for RISE modules is the external link? Yes, uh, RISE module and uh, another platform that we use. Um, mm. we, we use uh, external links. Yeah, like Panopto, right? Panopto, yes. And then there's your a, a, a oh, that thing. Um, which clearly <laughs> I never use that thing because I can't even say it right. I have um, dyslexia, it doesn't look right to me, so. <laughs> So, but yeah, so those are all the different things it will take. Uh, this well, just I like how I like how okay. scores at the top and X APIs at the bottom. That's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> priority. Well, that is probably what most people are still using. Uh, yeah. And then you can preview it in here. So where's the? Um, they have captioning, so it it has a little bot that can caption things. Where is my um, show the new feature? Is it the new feature on the bottom? Yeah, this is this was like my yeah. life changing for me, mm -hmm. which is they have a built in knowledge repository, um, which I'll show you. So it's basically, oh, sorry, I went, no, that is the right one. I was in the right one. Sorry. Um, so, for example, we're doing all this COVID 19 training. And normally you would have sat here and you would have added an article and pasted in the video. And I have like 23, um, as you can see, I was just doing this recently. Um, I had like 23 videos that I needed to put in here for reference that were also in the content area. And so they have this new item here where now I can just automatically publish it and just select which, um, which, repository to put it in and it just automatically goes there which was huge because we used to this is like this has come out in like the past month um, because previously I would have had to grab the URL for the video and come in here and 23 times write an article um, to paste in one video at a time mm -hmm. so so that was huge that was just a huge time saving ad Nice. And, and the mobile responsiveness piece, the, um, you know, Brad, Brad had mentioned that, um, that it's well built. Um, Mike, can yeah. you go into that a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, there, so there is a, there's just an app and, uh, it's very, what you see on that screen right there, that's what you would see on the app. It's very responsive, uh, no matter what phone you're on or plan you're on or anything. Uh, it works on iPads. It works on, uh, tablets to, uh, to phones and it's very smooth. Um, they, 
Exonify works a lot on the back end to make sure that it's a it's a very good user experience. And yeah. as you can see in the, uh, that Cristiano was just showing, they keep updating. They know that oh, the you know the LMS person would you know like us would like to throw the video into Discover. Let's create a button down there so they can just do it easily. So they're always thinking ahead. Um, of, of how to make it a better user experience for us in the design aspect and for them. But yeah, the, the, uh, the phone app and, and uh, tablet app are, are very, it's like you're on a laptop. It's, it's like you're on a laptop. Interesting. Yeah. So I, when I was going in to show you the file types it takes, um, I glossed over well, a lot, but you can see here, this is the main admin dashboard and they put their release notes here um, and you can see they are doing basically an agile process with um, about two small releases a month. And all of the content just comes right here or, or the release notes come right here so I can see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, enhancing the search experience, adding language support, new content. Um, so I guess the other thing to add um, and I know I'm still not saying what the catch is, um, which I think is what Kara said. Um, but they have a marketplace. Well, let me show you the actual marketplace. Um, that is the, there are things you can buy and they have a partnership with biz library. So all that stuff would, you know, cost money, but they also have, um, complementary topics that they create. And so all of our COVID training comes from them. And we did, so we have like those 23 COVID related articles and we didn't have to create the content. We created like, Mike created some content with our safety around very specific processes and practices we were doing like how to use the very specific temperature gun that um, safety bought to use in our warehouse or our manufacturing plant. Um, so we created that, but we got from them content on taking care of your face cloth, um, communicating while wearing a face mask, um, physical distancing, am I healthy enough to go to work? all how to wash your hands all this stuff was complimentary and included and it is what we released to all of our frontline employees and now that's why we're bringing the americas in because we're looking at having a return to the office in as early as january um, and we need to train our employees on how to how to do it uh, you know how to do things in the office um support no, that's and, great. And, that, yeah, having that connection to Biz Library is is um, yeah. That, that's a that's a great feature because those guys that's a that's a great library that those guys have. So another way, and I'm sorry, I know I'm still not talking about negatives, but another way that they are a great partner is that uh, when we when the casino started reopening, um, they the casinos learned about what we were doing to prepare our employees for returning our, our text to returning into the front line. Um, and so we asked, our president reached out to their president and asked if we could share just their videos with our employees. And I mean, I'm sorry, with our customers. So, and they agreed to, so they actually have hosted, publicly posted the videos, Exonify publicly posted the videos that they created around these topics and sent us the link. So we were able to publicly post them on our, this is our customer support website, so that our customers, the casinos who are not Exonify employees could at least, I mean, customers, excuse me, could at least have their employees watch the videos. They don't get the questions, they don't get the reinforcement, but they at least get that. And then we also um, made videos on how to clean an EGM, which is a slot machine, because it's not spray Windex directly on it and wipe it down, um, like it's a car window or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's a that's a great value add as well. Yeah, 
So it's going to be hard to say anything about um, about Exonify at this point with, with the, the generosity that they've obviously extended by sharing those videos. But is yeah. there anything that you see that like you know that that needs improvement at all? And when you do I, see things that need improvement, do you do you send the feedback to them? Yes. Yeah. Like, can you I, give me an example? That you want to share? I have stuff, but what you oh, have? Oh, please, please. Okay. Well, the first thing, like when we started it four years ago, um, I I had become, you know, I've been around way too long, and I came from K through 12 um, and higher ed and in corporate, but I had sort of meshed the Addy process in my head as, you know, the circular flow where I, everything just happens in my brain at once as, as far as writing objectives and questions and tests and content. And I fought tooth and nail. Um, and I, I was already had my PhD at this time. Um, and I was like, I should be able to do this. And I had the hardest time getting used to the process for developing content in Exonify. Be <laughs> Peacock went through it too when he joined yep, us. I did. And I, I, did. I always tell everybody, I was like, it's okay. It will be okay. Just go through the struggle because it's it takes you back to like an old school instructional design. It's actually, I actually think it's made me better um, because they're very particular. All right, here, let me go back to sharing again. So, you know, when you're doing, I guess I had gotten kind of lazy or whatever. Um, because when you're doing everything right, you write your your objectives and there are, when you're doing a class, like a blended class or, or, or a straight up ILT class, um, you, you write your objectives and they might be like, explain this, which is obviously more of a, a written test question or a verbal, prompt in the classroom versus demonstrate that, which actually means, you know, I have to go up to the slot machine and do something. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're very big about writing those objectives that same way, but then deciding which objectives would work in Exonify, meaning more of the explain, the um, analyze type things as opposed to the demonstrate. And identifying you know the things that you can do online with words and pictures and then you have to write klps key learning points um, and they have to be in these complete sentences with the answers in them so now you're going from a identify how to wash your hands to actually this is how you wash your hands and then you have to write questions um, and associate them with the learning point. I'm, I'm sorry, the KLPs, the key learning points. And then there's level one questions would have to be very much just your basic, you know, recall, fact finding. And then there are level two questions. Let me go find one of those. Um, where you're starting to, to do multiple, you're starting to, um, pick and choose good from bad, and you can have multiple questions, uh, multiple answers, do a multiple select question, basically. And then there's level three questions, which are starting to take you up into blooms, um, up into the synth synthesize and, and analyze with scenario-based questions. Um, and then they have these rules where we were first writing, because we were going through, like when Peacock joined two years ago, we were going having all this fun time where we would use like different TV shows. Like this training program would be all in Friends characters' names, and this one would be all in Seinfeld character names. And instead of saying a new coworker, it might say like Jerry just joined the team, and Elaine is about to have lunch with him. And then we had a lot of new people, so we had them come out and um, do some professional services training with us. And they were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and yeah. so, so there's things like that where it's like they really, you're you're better once you get over, get through it. 
but the getting through it process is so hard because you really have to do everything linear, linearly, which I can't say that word. Um, and then to the point, and then going, circling back around to, if you do have a true demonstrate learning objective here, they have behaviors um, and obviously we don't have any for washing your hands, but then you would write a behavior that a mentor or a trainer or a supervisor would watch the person, um, you know, and say yes or no, rate them as to whether or not they're actually doing the demonstration part right. Um, so it's just really a very, when you start, and you've been doing it for so long, like Mike and I, and everything sort of becomes one big step in your head to go back and have to really focus on each step. It's, I mean, I would, I used to get angry. <laughs> it, 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 it does get frustrating. It does, especially when working with new, with new uh, <laughs> uh, curriculum designers that come in and all right, you have to write Exonify. All right, let's walk you through that. And you remember the frustration you had because they're being frustrated right there. Um, so I guess yeah. that uh, back to you, Kara, is is that's probably one of the downfalls of this is uh, is the learning how to properly write and, and create uh, in a structured manner uh, the uh, the exonify way we'll call it. Yeah, um, it's it's at the old school instructional design like yeah. Dick and Carrie days, um, and. It's it's good. It makes you better. Yeah, it you does. Fight it for a few months. At least it, I did. It, it seems like ID nerds would probably get into that, right? Oh yeah, probably if you come from the military or something mm -hmm. and do that, um, yeah. do that military instructional design process they use, you'll probably be like, oh, I feel home. <laughs> Let's nice. see Yeah, as I see, it's like Exonify assumes no one at their customer companies knows anything at all about L and D, and they help the person by just giving them blanks to fill. You end up with a with good design, but less freedom and creativity. I'm trying to think if I agree with the freedom and creativity. I think when we create our own stuff, we're very free to create stuff. Um, yeah. create whatever we want. I think the content that they give us, yes, you're absolutely right. It, it yeah. seems like you just have to think it through. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, at a, at a more detailed, probably process yeah. in, in a more, in more detailed way than you would, than maybe you normally would, or even possibly even want to, but yeah. it seems like ultimately you come out with an effective product. Um, yeah. I think we do. We definitely, are way better than we were before we had it. Um, but it's it's a process to get through. The other thing to keep, keep talking about negatives um, is- Not negatives. Okay, <laughs> I actually want <laughs> negatives in this one. This is a tough one because I'm not getting anything bad. Word negative. Um, is, and this is, this is one of those unintended consequences things is it is gamified. Uh, you do earn points. We've, we've personally made some mistakes along the way with points um, because they call them programs and each program um, has different points aside. And in their perfect world, you have one program and regardless of the topic um, or the group, they're all in there. They just, it's just easier to show you. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep stopping my share. Um, so in the programs, they really want us to just have one. And we're working on cleaning it up. You can see we still have four more to clean up. Mm -hmm. But in here, you have all the different groups and they can have their different content, um, but they want them in this one program because of the settings and the points. And what we were doing is, you know, if you were learning about this games, or you're learning about our, our, our software products, we had different programs and some people would be in both. So they would get double points. They would get extra questions. Um, and therefore there's a leaderboard and 
the leaderboard with our groups is where it's at. Oh, I don't have, I haven't done my daily questions yet, so I can't see the leaderboard. Um, but uh, where can I? And yes, they I do have? care about points. They will they argue us. They will email they us that they yeah. didn't get their points. Uh, it, so if you're thinking, oh, people don't buy, it. yes, they do. I yeah. into the the points and the games and and uh, yeah. the leaderboards and and and. Uh, uh, who's winning at a specific game and it's yeah. pretty it's pretty competitive which is really it's really great to see yeah. that users are buying into this and uh, really investing in it wait when but you say it, they who's they like is it is our learners our learners oh, I, yes okay so like Sorry. this is these this is the leaderboard of top performers the most points earned in the past 30 days so this guy gabriel um who works in oklahoma i just know what this means um, he has earned through doing his Exonify and his daily questions, 3,790 points in the last 30 days. So if Kenneth here felt like one of the questions was tricky um, and he missed it, so therefore he didn't get all of his points, he would quite possibly literally write us and say, this question isn't fair and I didn't get my points. And so we end up doing things like, having to research um, points, sorry, no, I can't see the team. Sorry, I was trying to see if I could see the team board. Um, and the different t regional teams will actually like battle each other for, for bragging rights. And that's yeah. all it is, is bragging rights. Um, other of Azonify's customers do have, you know, stores where you can use the points and buy company merch or gift cards or whatever. We don't do that. Um, we just don't have that. And so it's all bragging rights and they are a competitive bunch. Um, and so one of the things that happened uh, like a year ago before everything went south with the pandemic and the economy started turning failing is some regions of the country had more new hires because of more casino openings and more growth. And so those areas had a lot of new people and they new people, the way we had it set up were earning more points just because they had so much to go through. So those teams would usually be on the top of the leaderboard and then the other teams would complain. And so you end up with a lot of like emotions to manage <laughs> because you're, you know, it's not like it's affecting their pay or any sort of reward system. It's totally bragging rights, but they get personal about it. Right. Well, <laughs> at least they're engaged, right? They are. They are engaged. <laughs> That's um, the important. Other, the other negative, because I do have one more that we actually only recently figured out, um, is one of the things in the dashboard is participation, meaning that you are, and we have low participation right now because we have um, all the Americas people in who don't actually know they're in yet. So this is our field service text and you can see 97% participation and they're logging in an average of 15.1 times a month. So what we've recently figured out, oh shoot, I, that never tells me anything, is that we have a couple of people who have figured out that if they just log into the app every day, it shows us participation, even if they don't take any questions. Mm. And these are, these are, we have a couple of people who have been around for like longer than I have, who don't feel like they need training. And, and truthfully, maybe they don't, but they're supposed to. And um, they just log in, so they get their participation score, but they're not actually completing any questions. Right. Nice. So they figured out how to game the system. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we have to figure out a new way to figure to handle that. Right. Um, and this is something like the Dana on our team um, discovered like two weeks ago, and we're like, oh shoot. So we have to figure <laughs> that out. All right. Uh, well, that's good. There's, there's one thing, one thing. Yeah. Finally, we've got, we've got um, <laughs> sort of one needs improvement yeah. item. Yeah. This is and great. Cause they have, as you can see, they have a great dashboard. Yeah. I can yeah. pop in that's here nice. at a glance and see 
where people are because now I'm seeing, okay, Anthony, he started as 67% correct on the vertex, but now he's up to 83 and he hasn't, he's in the intermediate level, which means he hasn't graduated yet. But here, this Mark guy has graduated. This Samuel is an expert in it. These guys haven't even started it yet. So we might need to dive in and find out why, um, you know. So, and I guess the other negative thing is, because it's daily questions and ongoing, like, you know, it's, it never, you're never done, right? You're never done, done with your training. Like in the old LMS, right? You go in, you'll watch your SCORM, you take your quest, your test, and you're done. You're trained, um, which is not effective, but that's what we lived with. Um, so the other thing is, that what was I going to say? Peacock, what was I going to say? You were going to say it's a oh, great reinforcement tool. Sorry. It is. No, I was going to say when we have new product releases, like a new slot machine cabinet that comes out, you really have to work hard because if there's someone who is just logging in most days to to get his participation points, but not take his actual questions, he's going to have a big backlog of topics. And when you push out because there's a new cabinet, it's not necessarily you have to really work at getting it to the front of the line. And for some people, if they're not doing daily questions, it's not going to get to their front of their line. So that part, that mindset of here's a new product, all, you know, 500 techs around America needs to know this by the end of the week. That's not really a thing. Um, it, it's, it's not as easy as it is with the LMS. I like, um, Darcy's comment here. It, it means they're motivated to use the tools, just not using the tool for the right goal. I think that's pretty, um, yeah, yeah. that's, that, 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 thanks for that, Darcy. Um, okay. Kim has a question. Yeah. Would that person's manager get a report or want a report? They would want one. They wouldn't necessarily get one, although now we probably need to, uh, nudge or, you know, create an actual outside the system email to the manager about that person. Um, because with Exonify, they actually make a leader zone that's like a uh, half the version of what I was showing you with the admin zone. And the, the leader is supposed to come in and check for participation. I'm not saying they all do. Yeah. But there's so the, so the leader is supposed to be self-sufficient, which is a beautiful thing as an admin. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it doesn't. We would have to go in and notice that, you know, that the field tech is is gaining the system and then yeah. go tell that person's manager, which is where we're at now. We haven't yeah. really figured out what to do about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, keep us posted on on how you handle that. It'd be interesting yeah. to see exactly how you how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up now. We've got we've done almost an hour, but um, what I want to know, I'm going to ask you guys just sort of some individual questions, and and I'll start with you, Mike. What is like one software tool that you use every day? And one of the reasons why I'm asking this is because I want to start doing a series on tools, and so I thought this was a good opportunity just to check. So. Something that you use all the time. Last time, let's see who we were talking to. We were talking to um, Craig, Craig Seibert. He was telling me that he used basically the most used tool in his toolbox is, is Snagit, TechSmith Snagit. What do you got for me? Premiere Pro. Really? Um, yeah, I'm always editing video and cleaning up audio, and I use Premiere Pro all the time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional audio engineer uh, and video, so I, I, I just go to that. Um, that's my, that's my go-to tool is Premiere Pro. He's nice. the only one on the team that uses Premiere. Well, I mean, that, yeah. no one else is going to say that's their go-to. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Mike, I'm going to hit, yeah. I'm gonna have to hit you up later on to talk about Premiere because, uh, Please. that would be a really fun topic to, to, to cover. And Christiana, how about you? What do you, uh, an everyday, um, like tool that you use? That isn't focused uh, on meditation or uh, van life. <laughs> I um 
I don't really get to create content that often. Uh -huh. So like right now, one of the things I'm doing is taking content from another team member where they've made a video and I'm using Exonify and making the KLPs and the questions, but mostly I do other stuff. So like Word and mm -hmm. I do use Snagit a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and But I would say, Mike, most of the team, their go-to is probably Rise, right? Probably Rise. Right. Rise is, Rise is yeah. uh, you know, it, they need to create something real quick. They'll throw it in Rise, create something in Rise. Yeah. So I, I would think it's a really, it's a go-to. Yeah. yeah. And then our guy, our classroom guidebooks are in InDesign. InDesign. Nice. Christiana, I know you have a lot going on all the time because just following you on Twitter, you've got lots of directions that, is there anything that, well, how do you keep yourself organized? Is there a tool you use to keep yourself organized? My bujo. Huh? Come on, <laughs> Luis, my bullet journal. Oh, and your bullet journal, journal. that's right. Okay. My bujo. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, bullet journal. Okay, I yeah, you've talked about that before, of course. Yeah. How I, can I like with Kim, I'm team bujo and team fountain pen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes, definitely. All right, you guys, how can people find you online if they want to reach out and connect? Twitter. Peacock doesn't Twitter. So, you know, if you guys want to peer pressure I, him, go right, I, right ahead. Yeah. I, I do need peer pressure on the Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Can yeah. I post your profile in? Please do. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. And then. Let's see, Christiana, let me, I have yours up here too. Let me go ahead and get that on there. Yep. And Mike, you don't need the Twitter. Come on. Yep. I don't, I don't. I, I, <laughs> yes, I, I just want to do it right now. I just want to back off because it's, I, I'm like, I need, I need some mental, for mental health. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, I purposes. Just, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm out for a while, but, uh, Anyway, <laughs> but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for sharing. Christiana, this is like really, really generous of you to share your screen, show folks a little bit more about Exonify. I'm probably going to send this over to those guys just to show them. Um, I'm mm -hmm. a little bummed you didn't have more to say, like more negative comments about it. But, you know, I guess that's just the way it is. It must be a pretty <laughs> darn good product. It and is. Um, it's very and stable. So, too. Yeah, 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 that's nice. Um, mm -hmm. Next week, we have another episode of this LMS Real Talk playlist. We're going to be talking with Leslie Marquez about uh, talent LMS, which is highly regarded as well. And so I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to, to having that conversation. And also, we're doing, I think, a LinkedIn, how to get the most out of LinkedIn um, conversation on October something. I can't remember. But that's coming up. Mike, you might want to um, tune into that one. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to no get your LinkedIn game going. And with that, thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care. Thanks, you guys. Thanks.